Welcome back. I'm glad you're here. This is Jennifer. So today I'm sharing with you how to take a background or coordinating die and turn it into a really unique shaker or window card. Now my examples are shaker cards, but you could definitely skip the shaker part and instead have backgrounds of dimension or windows. So I will demonstrate this with a large coordinating die and a background die, and hopefully there's an option that would work with supplies you have. Let's get started with this example. I'll actually be making two and two different color combos. I'm using the new Pink Fresh Studio Festive Leaves layering stencils and large coordinating die. You could do the layering stencils on their own to create a background, which you'll see, but that large die cuts out all of the leaves at once, which is a huge time saver. And I'm gonna show you a creative way to use a large coordinated die like this to create a shaker card. All right, now I need to cut my background layers. So instead of measuring, I'm just holding this large die at the center of the corner of this cardstock and then trimming around the edges. I just wanna have a nice trim around all four sides to be able to create this design. When I cut this, it ends up being about four and three quarters by six inches. I encourage you to make any size card you want. Don't feel like you have to stick to a particular size. Use whatever size works best with the products you have. As long as it fits in an envelope you have, you're good to go. I cut about five or six pieces to this size. All right, now let's do the stenciling. I have the first of the layering stencils and I'm placing it over one of those backgrounds, trying to center it up the best that I can. I am working on a magnetic platform today. I've had this for a long time, but I never felt the magnets held it well, the magnets that came with it. So I thought I would try it with these bar magnets, which really does a good job holding it. So I'm just trying it out. Do know there are many different surfaces that you can use to kind of hold your papers in place while you do stenciling and inking. Lots of options that I've shared in videos in the past. I just wanted to test the, this one out too, and it really works well with the bar magnets. Now I am using an inking tool and applying different colors of Pink Fresh dye ink on top but you could use any inks you want. I'm trying to do an uneven application of color just for a little variation. Now, since I have my supplies out, I'm just gonna make a second one of these. You do not need it for the card, but while I have my supplies out, I might as well make extras for later. I am trying out a new blending brush from Trinity Stamps. It's called the Blending Buddy Brush. This is a white handheld brush. I like the size of it, and I like that the bristles or whatever is kind of rounded on the edge making it easy to get smooth blending. I'm still trying it out. I bought a bunch of them to try. I'll let you guys know in a future video. Just wanted to mention in case anybody asked or wondered, and really you can use any kind of blending tool here that you want. Now on two other backgrounds, I did kind of some pool colors. So I have four backgrounds here. I only need one per card, but I'm doing extras and I'm making two cards today. All right, now it's time for the second stencil. You can see how easy it is to line up. There are little marks on the stencil to help you line up over a regular A2 panel, but I'm doing a bigger size, so I'm just lining it up the best I can. And this time I'm just putting a darker color on top of the inking we've already done. So for this one, I put down light blue with a little bit of green the first time. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm doing a pool color, and then I'll come in with whatever ink is left over on my green brush, maybe pick up a little more and add some green here or there. I just thought that would be a fun alternative to traditional green holly colors. Now it's time for the third stencil, and I'll do the traditional red berries on the green background, and then I'll do bright pink berries on the other background. So you can see these are easy to line up. There are a lot of great layering stencils out there. What's really cool about this is the coordinating die that you can use to cut these out if you want, or you can leave it as a background. Now I have the fourth and final stencil to add the darkest color to the berries. I'm zooming through this part because I wanna focus on the technique today, and these layering stencils are very easy to line up. All right, so now we have four backgrounds. We're gonna just take one and I'm gonna demonstrate how that coordinating die is intended to be used to cut out some of these leaves. 
So you just take the large die, line it right up, and run it through your die cut machine, and you have all of those images cut out and ready to go. It's a huge time saver. I don't need these for today's card. I just wanted to demonstrate it, so I'll set these aside for a future card. Now what I plan to do today is use that coordinating die to create windows for a shaker card. This is surprisingly easy to do with a die like this. So I have four pieces of white cardstock cut just like we did before. For my particular card, they're four and three quarters by six inches. I've already used the die to cut from the center of one of those pieces. I'm taking the die and lining it up right with those holes and I'm gonna tape it in place. We're gonna leave that negative space die cut taped onto this die. It's gonna help us line up with the other pieces. You could eyeball it in this process. You could just try to cut this from as close to the center from each piece as possible, but this gives you a more exact result. Now I take another piece of cardstock and I tape it behind the other, lining up the edges, very easy to do. Then I run that through my die cut machine. Any die cut machine will work. If your cardstock is really thick like mine, it's not gonna cut all the way through. It just leaves an impression, that's okay. Set it aside and do another. So I'm lining up the two pieces of paper. So that negative space that we have taped to our die is just to help us to line up for each of these runs through the die cut machine. If you have a thinner cardstock, it might cut through that layer. If not, don't worry, I'll show you how to fix it in a moment. Again, if you would prefer, you could just put the die in the center of the cardstock for each of the backgrounds and just hope they line up okay. They usually do line up okay, but this gives more exact results. All right, so I've done that on four pieces of cardstock. Now it's time to remove that negative space. We'll set that aside and use it later. We're gonna take the die and pop it into the impression that we have on these backgrounds. So I'll just pop it right in, it'll fit right in, then run it through the die cut machine again. This will cut it all the way through, and I know that this background negative space will line up with all the other negative spaces we're cutting. Now all the white individual die cuts I'm saving because I can use those to stack behind any inked die cuts I create for another card. So check this out, my two backgrounds now line up nicely. So these layers will form the walls of our shaker card, creating these little wells where we'll put our shaker bits to create the fun background. So I'll repeat this process on the different backgrounds that I made that impression in. All right, so now we need to glue these backgrounds together. I'm using a liquid adhesive and going around each of the openings. You wanna make sure you put adhesive around each of the openings so that none of the shaker bits fall out of the card. I will show you a faster way to do this on one of my cards later in this video. All right, so now I have adhesive on one of them. I'll place another one of the die cuts on top and I'll end up gluing all four of those layers together so we have nice dimension. You could do less layers if you want. You could do more layers if you want. I'm doing four because the shaker bits I plan to use have a little bit of dimension to them and I want room for them to move about. If you use, say, a chunky glitter or flat sequins, you definitely could do less layers. I do like to put something heavy on it while it dries. These are just countertop samples that a blog reader sent me that are heavy, but anything heavy would work great. All right, so now it's time to add this right onto our inked background. So I put adhesive on the back of those stacked die cuts and I'm lining it up over the inking we did and look how it lines up beautifully. And now we have these dimensional wells we can add shaker bits to. If you don't wanna add shaker, you could stop here and just have that fun reverse dimension. I did the exact same thing with our pink and pool colored background, just creating two cards at once. They'll pretty much end up being the same design. All right, now you can add whatever you want into these little wells. I'm using tiny crystal diamonds from Honeybee today. These are super tiny, they have a lot of sparkle, and they're see-through, so I'm not blocking any of the image behind it. You could also use a chunky glitter or flat tiny sequins. You could use micro beads or glass beads. Again, I do like any of the clear options and not putting too much in because we don't wanna block all of that inking that we did. Now, after I filled the wells, I put a little bit in each. I'm putting adhesive all around the wells, so right on that white area. And then I'll lay a piece of acetate on top. 
I'm using a piece I cut from some recycled packaging, but you could also buy acetate sheets. I'll link to the ones that I like below. This acetate sheet is cut to the same size as everything else, but a little bit smaller, just a tiny bit. And I'm pressing that down to make sure it seals off completely. The last step is to take one of our negative piece backgrounds and glue that on top. This just gives a nice finished look to everything. And check that out. We have a background of all of these little wells with shakers in them, which just is a fun way to use these type of coordinating dies. If you do not have large coordinating dies like these, you could do individual coordinating dies or use a background die, which I'll show you later in this video. All right, now I'm taking a piece of cardstock and scoring it in half. I'm not sure what size card I need for this. So this is one of the things I like to do. I just score a piece of cardstock in half, glue my background into the top left corner, leaving whatever amount of trim I want around it. And then I will cut the excess off the bottom and the sides. Now this card ends up being about five by six and a half inches, which is great. It'll fit in a five by seven envelope. One of the things I like to do when I use a colored note card is to cut a piece of white cardstock slightly smaller than the note card and glue that on the inside. I just feel it gives a nice finished look and is a great place to write your personal message. Let's do the sentiment for this card first. I chose to do foil, but I wanted to show you there are other options too. This is the Pink Fresh Studio Brushed Sentiments combo here. So these are sold either together or separately. The stamp set has two large stamps so that you stamp all of the words at once. The coordinating dies are two large coordinating dies so you can cut them out all at once. Same with the foil, so you have foil plate options and layering stencil options. This is nice because all of these allow you to create a bunch of sentiments at once and you can choose either the stencils, the foiling, or the stamps. I've used a non-holiday version of this in the past, and I'll link to that video up here on the top right. I chose to do foil, so I took one of the plates, and I've taped it like a hinge onto some hammer mill cardstock, which is just a smooth white cardstock. I'm taking some fun red sparkle foil, and I'm placing it underneath the plate so the pretty side touches the plate, and I'm taping that in place. I'll link to this foil below, it's gorgeous. Now we'll take that and flip it over and put it on the hot portion of our glimmer machine. This is a foil machine that applies the heat. You press the timer button. When the timer's off, you take it all out and run it through your die cut machine, which applies the pressure. For a closer look at this process, I'll link to a video at the top right. Once it's all done foiling, check this out. You have all of these beautiful shimmery foiled words. And you can use that negative space foil. I'll link to a video that shows how to do that too. And look at that, absolutely gorgeous. Now I can use that one coordinating die to cut all the words out at once. I will only use one of these for today, but I'll save the others for future cards. I cut two more greeting die cuts from scraps of cardstock, and I'm gluing that behind our foiled sentiment just to give it some dimension. That helps it to stand out against the busy background. I will then glue it right onto the top of our background. I did also add some red gemstones here and there scattered around the background, and I have a five by seven envelope to match. I will link to my favorite source of five by seven envelopes below. So as I shake this, you can see those little crystals move around, but because I use small clear crystals, you can still see the holly colors behind it. So this is a fun way to use one of your large background coordinating dies to create a fun shaker background. However, you could do any stamped image and use a coordinating die and then fill it with the shakers to do the same look. By the way, the Wishing You Peace sentiment is from the Simonses Stamp Tiny Word Stamp Set. It's an old favorite of mine. Before we move on to a different card design, I wanted to show you how I did the stenciled sentiment on this one. I'm using those layering stencils from the brush sentiments set I showed you before. Now you could ink over all of the words here and create them all at once, but I'll be honest, I was in a hurry and I didn't wanna take the time to ink over them all. I now regret it because I would have had some leftover sentiments, but I'm just applying ink over the greetings portion. 
I did the first stencil with a light color of ink, the second stencil with a medium color of ink, and then line up the third stencil with the darkest color of ink. And this ends up giving you this three-dimensional look just by using the three shades of ink and three stencils. You could also use one ink and do a light amount of ink on the first stencil, a medium application of ink on the second stencil, and a heavy amount on the third and get a similar look. So now I have this sentiment that matches the inking that I used on the berries of my background. So it'll be a perfect match. Now I can use that coordinating die to cut out this word and we can add it to our card just as we did on the last example. This time I added everything to a pink note card. Again, it's about six and a half by five inches and I used pink sequins to scatter around the white background. I just think this is a really fun and unexpected way to use any of your stamps or stencils that have coordinating dies. Okay, let's do another example. It's a similar process, but sometimes I think it's good to see it again so you can kind of get a better idea of how to do this on your own. Then we'll move on to a background die example. All right, for this one, I'm using the new Pink Fresh Studio Ornaments Bundle. So these are sold together or separate. There is a hot foil plate, a stamp set, layering stencils, and coordinating dies. So I'm gonna do the foiling, but you definitely could do the stamp instead or do the layering stencils alone. I will be doing the foil, layering stencils, and coordinating die today. I have cut a piece of white cardstock to be a bit bigger than the plate. So this is about four and three quarters by six and a half inches. That's gonna be the magic number for this particular card, and we'll cut a bunch of pieces that way. So I have taped my hot foil plate onto the cardstock like a hinge, and I'm using the new Spellbinders Opaque Black Hot Foil. It comes with white also, a roll of white, and this gives kind of like a matte uh, black finish. It's really cool, I like it a lot, and I think the white would be beautiful on colored cardstock. I'll be sure to use that in a video in the future, but today I'm just using the black. You could definitely use a, one of the more shiny foils here if you prefer. But since I'm adding inking over this anyways, I didn't want it to be too uh, sparkly, I guess. And so I flipped that over, put it on the hot portion of the glimmer machine, press the timer button. When it's done, I take all the plates out, run it through our die cut machine for pressure, and then we get this beautiful black foiled image. It's gorgeous. I will show you more ways to use this black and white opaque foil in the future. But for now, I just thought it looked great for this outline image. All right, next we're gonna do the layering stencils on top of this. You could instead color with markers or ink on your own if you prefer. These stencils really make it fast to do. I'm putting the colors that I use up on the top corner there. For this first stencil, I'm doing a lighter color and I'm doing each ornament a different color. I'm not taking a lot of time to get even ink blending here. I like the uneven look because I feel when it dries, it gives a little more variation. And I'm being lazy. I'm using scraps of cardstock to mask off the other ornaments while I do each in a different color. If you want to save time, you could do the same color over the entire stencil. All right, we can remove that first stencil and then add in the second one. These are very easy to line up. It lines up with the foiling that we've done. But this looks really cool also without the outline if you wanted to skip it and just do the stenciling. Now over this stencil, I'm using the same colors on each ornament, but a darker color. So this time I'm using a darker shade of each. You could just do a heavier application of the first color if you prefer, but I have these colors that work really well together, so I might as well use them. The Pink Fresh ink line actually has inks that are like a light, medium, dark, and extra dark in the same color family. So it makes it easy to figure out layering stencils like this. All right, now it's time for the final layering stencil, and this I'm doing in my darkest colors. I like how this adds detail and fills in that foil, foil image that we did, fills it in perfectly, and is such a time saver over using markers, at least for me. I'd much rather do inking than markers any day of the week. I'm just more comfortable doing it that way, but it's good to have the options. And I just love the results of this. Now I'm using that large coordinating die to cut these all out at once. And I like that you can take these and add these onto your card however you want, or use them on multiple cards. But today we're gonna do another one of those background shaker cards. 
So I'm cutting more of my backgrounds and these are uh, four and three quarters by six and a half inches. You can cut four or five of these and these will form the walls of our shaker card. So we'll do the same process we did before. I'll take one of these pieces and I'll cut with that coordinating die from the center. This time I'm taking out the centers, but I'm leaving that die and that negative space on my magnetic mat of my die cut machine here. And I'll just take the next piece of cardstock here. I want to show you, you can see the dies there, negative space is there. I'll take the next piece of cardstock and line it up and tape it there. This is really the exact same thing I did before, but before I picked up the die in negative space and taped the extra piece of cardstock to the back, here I'm just doing it on the magnetic cutting plate since it's stuck there anyways. So I made an impression on that first piece, and then I'll do the same thing with three other pieces. So I'll just line one up here, tape it in place, run it through my die cut machine, it makes an impression, and we'll set it aside. And we'll repeat that till they're all done. Now I will remove that negative space and the die and I'll take the die and line it up with one of our backgrounds where we've made the impression already. It just kind of pops into that impression and then run it through our die cut machine. Again, if you use a lighter weight cardstock or maybe your die cut machine is stronger than mine, it might cut through instead of making an impression in the first pass, but I'm using really heavy weight cardstock. So I have to do it in two passes, but look it, it lines up wonderfully. But if you want to eyeball it, you could definitely eyeball it and just cut the die from the center of each piece. All right, so now I'm putting liquid adhesive around all of the openings here. And then I will glue all of those backgrounds together, except one, we'll save one for later. So we have these stacked die cut backgrounds that will form the walls of our shaker card. All right, so I have a folded piece of cardstock here that I'll end up trimming down in a bit to form the note card for this background. I'm putting glue on the back of our stacked die cuts and gluing that close to the top left corner of that folded cardstock. Again, we'll trim it down later. I'll put glue on the back of our, each of our ornament die cuts and then pop them in place on our blue note card. So I just pop them right into those little uh, wells that we created with our stacked die cuts. On my first example, I kept the piece, the inked piece whole and just glued it behind the wells that we created with the stacked die cuts. This time I'm popping them into place. It really doesn't matter. I just wanted to demonstrate what these look like when you cut them all out. So I will fill each of these with those inked die cuts and you can see they're set back. It gives a really cool look. You could leave it like this and not do the shaker portion if you prefer and you have this kind of reversed dimension. All right, now I'm gonna fill the wells with some of those clear crystals from Honeybee. Again, you can use whatever you want. If you want a lot of movement, I recommend seed beads or micro beads, but I thought this would be nice because it has some sparkle to it, and it's clear so it doesn't distract from the color behind it. I put adhesive along the top of that white stack die cut and I added a piece of acetate on top to seal off our shaker window. And now we have our last die cut piece that I'll glue on top to give a nice finished look. For a sentiment on this card, I used the Pink Fresh Studio Tidings of Great Joy. There are uh, some layering stencils a stamp set and coordinating dies that are all sold separate or together. The layering stencils color in that image. This would be really fun for a shaker card in the middle or even for a photo card. You could die cut that center out and put a photo in there. I might do that this year. But for this card, I'm just using the sentiment. I black heat embossed the sentiment on white cardstock and used the coordinating die to cut it out and glued it to the bottom right of our background. I also glued some ir iridescent or holographic confetti on the white space. Now, before I had a blue note card behind this, the blue was a little too distracting, so I cut all the blue off, and I just glued the background onto a light gray note card instead. This ended up being almost five by seven inches in the end, and I used Lawn Fawn Fog cardstock for the note card. By the way, you could use a pen to draw strings on the ornaments, but I decided to skip that. Now I know not everyone has large coordinating dies that work with some of their images, like I used on the first few examples. So I wanted to demonstrate how you can do this with a basic background die in hopes that you can give this a try. 
Now I cut one of these background die cuts from white cardstock. And to save time, I'm spraying the back of it with spray adhesive. You could use liquid adhesive here, but spray adhesive is really a great time saver when you have something this intricate. I'm gluing my die cut onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. And by the way, this is the elongated lattice background die from Pink Fresh. Okay, so that's just one die cut glued onto our note card. I wanted to die cut and lay different colors into the openings on the back of our card. So I grabbed some colors of cardstock from my scrap drawer, cut off a little piece, ran that through my die cut machine, and now I have a row of these dark uh, teal colored pieces that I can inlay onto our card. So you just pop the pieces out and put them right into some glue in the openings. They go together like a puzzle. I really like doing this process. It didn't take too long for this particular background die. But if you prefer, you could have inked the background of the note card first, maybe done a rainbow of ink, then glue the die cut on top, and that would allow color to show through the openings and save time over doing the inlay. Now I repeated this process with each row of these die cuts using a different color each time. I like doing this process and it's also a great way to use up some of your scraps. I also inlaid gray for those little diamonds between. All right, now to build the walls of our shaker. I die cut three more of that same background die and I'm gluing those together, again using spray adhesive just to save time. When you do use a spray adhesive, be sure to give it time to dry with something heavy on top to make sure it sticks together. I now put spray adhesive on the back of those stacked die cuts and glued it right onto our card. So now we have dimension and it forms all those little wells where we can add some shaker goodness. I used the little crystals again and only put them in the wells of the bright color. Those little gray diamond areas, I left those empty. Just, I don't know. I just thought it would give it a nice clean look. Once I filled the wells, I'm putting liquid adhesive on the top layer of the white die cuts, those stacked white die cuts, and then we can lay a piece of acetate on top. When you put acetate on the liquid adhesive, I do again recommend putting something heavy on top just to make sure it all is secure. Now I'm going to create a foil sentiment, and I wanted to show you that I messed up. When I did the foiling off screen, I put my foil upside down under the hot foil plate. And when I took it off, I didn't foil my paper. Instead, I foiled my hot foil plate. My foil plate is now pretty, <laughs> uh, but thankfully it'll still work fine. So if you do this ever by accident, don't worry, the foil plate will still work. But the trick is to make sure the pretty side of your foil kisses the hot foil plate. I did it upside down last time, thus the issue, but here I'm doing it correct to demonstrate that your plate will still work even if you do that mistake. It happens to the best of us, I tell you. I do these kind of things a lot. I just usually edit it out of the video to save time. All right, so now we'll foil this correctly. This, by the way, is the Pink Fresh Studio Joy Hot Foil Plate, and there is a coordinating die that works with it. I wanted to make sure I got each of these three letters centered and straight on my background. So here's a trick that I do. I take the negative space of the die cut and I trim it down close to the edge. That just makes it easier to get it centered. After I have it trimmed down, I will temporarily tape it across my card. It's easier to line this up than each of the three individual layers. Once it's taped down, I can put glue on the back of my letters and pop them right into the opening. By the way, I did die cut two extra of each letter and glued it behind the foil one so it has some dimension. This is a busy background, so by adding dimension behind my sentiment, it'll stand out more. All right, now I'll give that some time to dry. Once it's dry, I can remove that negative space, and my letters are evenly spaced right along the center of the card. I decided that the gold foil didn't stand out enough, so I switched and I used the black foil instead. I just foiled and die cut the black letters and glued them on top of the gold one, and no one will ever know I changed my mind. I also stamped Wishing You from that Tiny Word Simon Says Stamp stamp set that I showed you earlier, and I glued that on top for a Wishing You Joy greeting. So here you can see all those shaker bits moving around in there. It's a fun way to get a different look from a background die. So check your stash, see if you have any background dies with openings, and give it a try. 
Before we go, I wanted to show you a few other products that would work really well for this technique, just to give you more options. This is the Pink Fresh Studio Snowflakes Hot Foil Plate and Coordinating Dies. You could do this same technique and end up with a fun shaker background with these four snowflakes. And here is another. It is a background stamp and a coordinating die that lines up. So you could do the same technique with this too. I just think it's fun to look at other options. I feel like the more options I share, the more likely you are to find something in your stash that works. All right, now if you're interested in any of the products that I use today, it's linked below in my YouTube description. I'm always thankful when you come to visit. I appreciate you spending this time with me. If you want to check out a couple other related videos, I'll link them here at the end, including one that shows how to do this technique with a single large coordinating die. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon with another technique video.